Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. Okay, so this video is in response to a few comments that I got on the video I posted about CBDCs where people concerns whether you can trade your physical silver in for CBDCs or can you receive CBDCs for your physical silver. But I think it's worth noting that there is no CBDCs in the United States as of the recording of this podcast. I know that the International Central Bank that Digital Currency Monetary Authority has released their version of a digital currency. And I believe the ECB or the European Central Bank is going to release theirs by the end of the year. And there's a lot of very interesting reading. I'll leave some links in the description so you can go read it for yourself. I read some of it and it's very interesting. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Before we get started, I feel the need to tell you that I am no expert on any of this stuff. Everything that I'm presenting to you is my opinion based on easily researched information. So everything that I'm sharing with you can easily be researched and you can come to your own conclusions based on your own research. The information that I research and present here to you is really meant to inform your thinking and not to guide it in any direction. That's really up to you and your own personal point of view. Okay, so this comes from a viewer to my channel, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that if that's indeed a name, but it's MITM19. You can pause and read if you like. And here's a similar comment from a YouTube content provider channel name, Leading Indicator. And one more, this comes from Dites12. Okay, so the one thing I think we need to understand or keep in mind that physical metals is money. It is value. It is an asset that has absolute value. It has intrinsic value, which means it has value simply because it is silver. Our demand for silver, either personal demand for silver, silver in commerce, silver in industry, those kind of things make silver very valuable, physical silver, very valuable. And it'll always be valuable. And history shows us that no matter whatever the medium of exchange happens to be, it will always be traded for physical silver. Someone will always be willing to trade something of equal value for physical metals. And history has showed us that. If indeed the metals aren't themselves being used as a medium of exchange, people are willing to use whatever the medium of exchange is to acquire gold and silver. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So I think the question is understanding what CBDC actually is, what central bank digital currencies actually are. They are currency. They're basically a dollar bill in digital form. So picture it like this, your device, whatever that device, that device is, either it is your cell phone or some other device that maybe the federal government will come up with. So picture you walk into a store and what you purchase that you would normally pull out a bill and pay the cashier for, well, now you just pull out your cell phone or a card issued by the federal government or whatever, and that is your cash. It acts as a physical note to pay for your goods and services, whatever they may be. And so CBDCs are cash. They are cash in digital form. And if CBDCs happen to be the currency at the time, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to trade some of your physical silver, basically sell some of your physical silver for that currency. I mean, it's the exact same as it would be today if you took your physical silver down to your local coin store, your bullion dealer, and sold it to him or her for money, for cash. But here's the rub, <laughs> and it's a pretty big rub, and it's what's got a lot of people nervous about the whole idea of central bank digital currencies. What used to be an anonymous transaction between myself and whoever I'm purchasing the physical silver from with cash is now not going to be anonymous. It can't be because the central bank digital currency is managed by the central bank. So that means that your currency is now on a ledger or in a spreadsheet in one of those cells. It's going to be 
trackable. Not that it's gonna be tracked, but it's absolutely trackable because now that record, the record of that transaction is going to be stored. So in my opinion, I really don't see that there's a concern about the digital currency being able to be used to purchase physical metals or uh, our physical metals being able to be converted into digital currency. I don't see that that's gonna be an issue. For me, the main issue is gonna be the transaction itself. Whenever there's an emergency and you need cash for your physical metals, timing is everything. And if, if there's a process that they make you go through before you can convert your physical metals into CBDCs, that would be an issue for an emergency that is time sensitive. I really don't see even that as a major concern because they'll work that out. You gotta keep this in mind. They're gonna have to sell CBDCs to the public. And by that, I mean, they're gonna have to present this in a way that we will tolerate. So imagine for a moment that the first things that get rolled out is all the restrictions, all the things that you can't do with CBDC. I mean, that would not go over well with the public who's gonna have to accept it and use it. So like I said in previous videos, I think a lot of the nervousness and concern about central bank digital currencies right now is a little premature. I mean, right now you can buy as much physical silver as you like or you can afford with currency. Right now there is physical silver that you can acquire with banknotes, with cash. And I want you to keep something in mind. The treasury produces a lot of silver products for us to buy, be it eagles, the silver commemoratives, the silver medals, those kind of things, and they, they produce them for the public. They know that we convert a lot of cash, fiat currency, into precious metals, be it gold or silver. So the federal government produces silver for purchase by us, and they sell a lot. Millions and millions of dollars a year goes into the federal government by our purchases of physical silver. So I don't see them interfering with that anytime soon. For me, there are more potentially troubling things about central bank digital currencies other than our ability to purchase or to sell our physical silver. So I don't really see physical metals and whatever currency they wanna come up with be a digital currency, uh, either or. They're not gonna struggle with each other. They're gonna be just like they are today. Our ability to purchase them is not gonna change. So anyway, tell me what you think. Leave it in the comments. You know, all of this is speculation because we don't know and everybody's entitled to their opinion. And so, you know, that's where I'm gonna leave it. More good content coming up. I'm going to see Clay down at Main Street Coin on Tuesday. We're going to buy some of his silver, if he's got some, see so if we can get some constitutional silver, maybe some uh, three nines fine. We're going to talk to him a little bit about what we talk about here on the Silver Joker channel. We're just going to, um, you know, keep this silver train rolling. Information is power, and the information that we present while we're riding this train is going to be presented as unbiased as I possibly can, <laughs> except for my feelings towards physical silver. <laughs> I've tried. It's impossible for me to be unbiased <laughs> about silver. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Mm -hmm.